again, it's Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the year, or time of the week, time of the year, time of the it day. Is the time All of the, the time. Year. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> that is, it is the most wonderful time of the year. We are so glad that you joined us, Ashley Strumming and Steve Post. Wow, it's good to be back sitting yes, uh, sitting here talking sprint cars. Absolutely. I I did enjoy the off season. Yes. The little down the little downtime well, we had. But it is good being back. You you mentioned the little downtime. You had very little downtime. We did. Your and my off season apparently have been like the tale of two off seasons. Because <laughs> you with lethal chassis and your business, you guys have been just slammed busy. Yes. And blessed. We are very, very blessed. Um never did, in a million years did we think it would turn into this, but we're incredibly blessed and we love racing and it beats working for the man any day of the week. No but doubt. uh, you know, I gotta love talking sprint cars too. That's right. Get away from that modified <laughs> world right. over to talk sprint cars. <laughs> Mine has been the opposite. Okay. Normally my off season with PRI and then Lenny Sammons does the indoor auto racing in Allentown, Atlantic City, Syracuse, all of that. Normally I'm going and coming and going and everything else. All shot. Yeah. All done. I added something new. I went to the Snowball Derby. Mm -hmm. Okay, added that. Wow, what a race that is. Oh, my gosh. That's... It makes for a long week, but it is yeah. when the finale happens. It's a oh, good it's one. phenomenal. Phenomenal. So I did that, but that was the early December, and until last weekend uh, when, I, when I went to Screven, I was home for like seven or eight weeks. Yes. I think that's the longest time in my adult career life that I've been home that long. It's obviously, we know it's been crazy yeah. because of everything that happened last year, but this year it presented new challenges. Just You talked about people. It changed our schedules. It kind of put us behind not having these events to know where right. we were at in life, <laughs> you know, yeah. knowing that our timeline was quickly rolling along and here we are. Yeah, Volusia. and here we are. <laughs> yeah, here exactly. Volusia. Here we are. Volusia is upon us, whether we like it or not. And so, um, yeah, crazy, crazy off season. Crazy different. Um, fingers crossed for That's a right. good season of sprint car racing. It was a really good season of sprint car racing, even though it was uh, limited in the nature for Casey Kane Racing last year. Mm -hmm. Oh, won the championship again, second year in a row. And so, really, really neat. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk to Casey. How about kicking it off with Casey Kane? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to hear what he has to say about James because we talked to James oh, last year, God, too, yes. and that was craziness with everything that was going on and what he had to go through. So yeah. it'll be exciting to yeah, hear James what Casey is, has to say about if, if I'm a betting man, James is at custom somewhere or in quarantine <laughs> somewhere. I don't know where he is. Right? I don't even know he's already he's presented his case to yes. the government. He's yeah, going to go. Yeah, we talked to James McFadden as his Australian driver last year, and the process he did to get back and forth wow. was mind-boggling. And so I'm assuming he's in the middle of that process. Somewhere. So neat stuff, that's for sure. Hey, so uh, that's the game plan. We're going to kick it off. This Casey is our 10th season of Wing Nation. Crazy. And we're going to kick it off with Casey Kane coming up. Do a little shopping. Well, I heard an apple a day keeps a doctor away. And 10 keeps the competition away. I got you a Granny Smith seeing you're a little sour. From sweet to tart and everything in between, Sage Fruit supplies every variety of apple that shoppers may be looking for. For over three generations, they've been providing customers with only the best apples, pears, and cherries that Washington has to offer. You're finally taking my advice. Well, something like that. I figured out how to get my 10 apples in a day. Sage Fruit, it's the choice of champions. It is Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. The Hercules Tire Hotline is where we're going. Our first show of the year. I love, you know what, Ashley? I love a couple of times at Knoxville. We've started the Knoxville national coverage with Casey Kane on the stage with mm -hmm. us. And so we're going to start our 10th year of Wing Nation <laughs> with Casey Kane joining us on the Hercules Tire Hotline. Hello, Casey. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, good to be on the, the first one of the season. And, yeah, I always remember the Knoxville one. So it was a really good time out there uh, to be part of it. and just be part of the Nationals and all that and then uh, be on the show. So, yeah, looking forward to another great season. Boy, no doubt about it. Casey, speaking of another great season, you wrapped up a good season. I mean, I know there was only 56 races with the World of Outlaws, but you claimed the big prize, the championship win, second consecutive one. There has got to be – winning the first one's got to be great, but backing it up has got to be a little bit better even. Yeah, I think for, you know, Brad and, and the whole Napa team to come back and. I, I mean, they were stronger, you know, early in that early last season than than the year before. So it was, you know, it was great to watch. They fell off a little bit during the middle and then came back really strong late in the year. So um, yeah, it was. They had to had to work for it for sure. It got close at times. Um, not everything went their way, so they had to battle through that. You know, some of the ups and downs of of racing, and um, yeah, they pulled it off again. So it was 
it was exciting to to be a car owner and and cheer them on and uh, yeah, see them do two two in a row. Okay, so you talk about being that car owner. Obviously, you have three World of Outlaw Championships as a car owner. But deep down inside, is there a part of you that wishes your name was on that driver <laughs> champion list? I mean, that's what, when I was, you know, younger growing up, but that was what I wanted to do was race sprint cars, be a world of outlaw, you know, sprint car driver and dirt racing. And that was kind of my goals and really where my mind was um, as I got opportunities to, to race more and, you know, move around and race in the Midwest and things like that some of that path changed uh, when I started doing some pavement and realized that I actually really liked pavement and wasn't too bad at it. So, um, yeah, so at that point I just went that direction and, and never have put enough time into sprint car racing to do what the best guys do. I mean, it's, uh, you know, and to do it night after night after night, is it's pretty impressive what a, a few of those World of Outlaw guys can do every single night. Talk a little bit to us, share a little bit with us about Brad's commitment, which is to your point, because boy, a light switch went on about three years ago with this young man. And and just describe a little bit how committed he is to, to, to sprint car racing and being the top of his game. Well, he's always been really committed to racing, uh, what, you know, whatever type sure. of cars we were, we were doing long before he would even race for, you know, KKR. Um, he was very committed and that's why I got, so interested in him because I, you know, watched all the different types of cars and owners and things that he was racing, trying to win races in, um, and doing a really good job at. So I, that's why I liked him. And, and we got started together. Uh, he won a lot of, you know, different races for us over the years. And, um, but we had the world of outlaw team. So he would still race some world of outlaw sprint car races here and there. And, but just wasn't doing it enough to, to get to where he's at today. And, um, over, I would say the last, you know, five years, he just, the effort for just sprint car racing, just world about less sprint car racing. And it's, you know, that's where his mind's been. That's all that he's wanted to do. And, um, it shows he's, he's as good as it gets in sprint cars now. And that's, I think that's a lot of just hard work and determination on his side and, and then getting with, you know, good teams and being able to work with them and always, you know, never be satisfied. You know, that's one thing I see about him and, Eric and Joe and Andrew is they're never satisfied they're they could win a few in a row and um you know have a really good month but they're always trying to get better and always trying to look for the next little thing to, to go faster so I like that a lot I think you have to be that way and that's just how they are so it, uh, it works really good for them Casey, I kind of want to pay back on that, and I want to dig a little deeper into it because I hear you say his commitment um, and and just their drive wanting to be better. I remember walking in the trailer at Dodge City, and Brad's deep in the notebook digging at that point. What really builds that character? Is it Brad watching races? Is it him questioning things to you and and the guys on the team? What really builds that commitment? I think, you know, watching – other people uh, watching other other drivers and things. I think he's paid very close attention to, um, you know, the guys who who win the you know most of the races, things like that. So I think that, and then it has to be a feel. So as you're you're racing and you win a race or you win another, and you keep probably coming up on the same feel that you've been looking for that you've trying been trying to build. So then you know trying to find that and understand why you have that. Feel. And then I think with sprint cars, you know, the tires and, and there's certain things that are always changing. I think in racing in general, that type of stuff's always changing a little bit. Even if the tire company says it's not, I feel like there's still differences, you know, like it's still not the exact same every batch of tires or every year when, when they're supposed to be. So there's, there's things that go along with that. And, and then you have to work, you know, to find that again. And then the short tracks or the big track, flat track, bank track. Um, dry, heavier, like there's just a lot of different scenarios. And I, to me, by putting in the time that he's put in and that, you know, being able to be here at KKR for so many years now, their notebook just keeps, you know, getting bigger and bigger and, and kind of from just maybe in his mind, but also things that they can look at and go back to and understand and remember exactly what worked and why that worked and just get that feeling. But it, I think until you build all that, like it's really hard to just be that consistent everywhere across the United States. 
That makes a lot of sense. It really does. And and we see that with, with Steve Kinzer, with Donnie Schatz, with the guys that have been on that level, and Brad has, has joined them in that level. So it is uh, it is that, that commitment, that dedication. Casey, hang in there. Everyone else, uh, stick around. More with Casey Kane in just a moment. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to the checkout. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. The Hercules Tire Hotline is a busy place today. Casey Kane joins us as we uh, chat with him. Uh, Casey, we talked a lot before the break about uh, one of your drivers, Brad uh, Sweet. We joked around, Ashley and I did during the opening, that James McFadden is probably in <laughs> quarantine, in customs, or somewhere in between. Where's James, and what's the game plan for James this year? Yeah, so James, hopefully he's not in quarantine right now. He, yeah. I know he had to... <laughs> do quarantine after he left in uh, after world finals and that was i had imagined 14 pretty hard days on him to just be in a hotel room in sydney australia and just waiting but he got through all that uh, he's raced a little bit over there and won some races the ones that they were able to to go and race that's been good for australia and, um he with the pandemic and quarantine and all that stuff um you know family things as well like he's He's going to get here as soon as he can, but it's looking like March will be about, like early March will be about the soonest he can make it. So um, we're excited for him to get here, and we're doing the, uh, yeah, we're working hard to do the full World of Outlaw deal and the nine car this year as well, just like the 49, and uh, James will be the driver once he gets here. So that'll be, yeah, it'll be great to have him back. Uh, James shared with us kind of the debacle that he had to go to get his work visa to get here. And he talked about how he had to go in front of the government and explain his case. Is there anything that you guys have to do to help James with that process? Yeah, so we did on our side as well. And we had a great, um, really good guy from Charlotte uh, that would come up to the shop and, and we'd go visit him if we needed to and just to get through all the paperwork. And then he would send it to James and he was going back. He was kind of running the, the whole deal. And then they would take it. So James would take it over there where he needed to take it. And it was a process. We, uh, I mean, it took a while. He didn't get here until late July. And um, that, that wasn't the plan. So it, <laughs> it took a while, but he has that now for, it might be three years or okay. three or four or six. I can't remember exactly what he told me, but he has it for a while. So he's in, he's in good shape now. That is great. Okay, so the nine cars run in the full season. James is not going to be here till early March. Um, I believe I read that you are going to climb aboard. Um, how are you feeling? Uh, you ran 11 times last year. Um, how is sprint car driver Casey Kane gearing up and getting ready to go? Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I just do the races till he gets here, and then it, you know, it'll be his car at that point. So it's... Uh... I think it'd be pretty good. I ran the Chili Bowl a couple weeks ago and enjoyed that. It didn't go as planned, but I mean, that's Chili Bowl. That, that happens to, you know, everyone. Some years are like that and other years go a lot better. So it's kind of part of Chili Bowl. But um, overall, yeah, I look, I'm excited to go racing and work with the guys. We have a, both our teams are really good, you know, groups of guys. Um, you know, and I'm, so I get to drive a, one of the best cars that, in sprint car racing, you know, for a few weeks, that'll be, be fun. Not a bad deal. And starting off with Volusia, of course, it's been good to KKR. Yeah. It's been good to you. What is it about that place that you guys have just kind of figured out? Oh, I feel like it's, yeah. The, you look back at a lot of the things that they've done over the years. I, I look back at everything and there's not a lot of things that really go together. Uh, they've won races with all different types of cars, all different packages. Uh, there's a lot of ways that they've all won races down there. But for whatever reason, yeah, we have good speed at Volusia. The guys are, I think they're always just excited to get going. And um, our drivers have always been really good down at that track. So that helps. Um, yeah. So I, I think overall, it's just, we have a good group that wants to perform right off the start of the season. And uh, Volusia has been a good track for us. But there's, yeah, there's uh 
man, they've, they've won races with a lot of different packages at that track. 13 overall wins at Volusia six times. They hoisted the big gator in the air for the championship as well. Casey, I want to step away from the racetrack just a little bit in our final couple of minutes with you here. Um, two years ago was your last NASCAR season. What is life like now as you've settled in a couple of years later to life after being a NASCAR Cup Series driver? Oh, it's, it's still still really into racing, so it's, yeah. um, I have that. The, I think to get to race the sprint car every once in a while, or, you know, last year I raced for a pretty good period of time there. Um, I think that kind of, you know, helps me be okay with not racing in the Cup Series anymore because I still get to race here and there and, you know, have that thrill or, you know, that energy that I've had for so many years of my life. So, yeah, I really like that I have that um spend a lot of time with Tanner which I did when I was still racing cup as well so that hasn't changed a lot but I do get a lot of time with him we go out to Colorado he's, he, we've worked hard on skiing the last couple of years last couple of winters out there and he's uh yeah for being five he's actually doing a really good job on the on the ski slopes so he gets better at that each year and I put a lot of time in too because I absolutely love skiing um so yeah that's uh kind of been it you know the sprint car stuff tanner uh colorado and um yeah it's been the the best part of uh, the last couple of years to me nothing wrong with all i saw you a week or so ago out at millbridge with your nephew eli uh saw you with eli out there real quick we're right up against the break does tanner have any interest in following in uh, his dad's footsteps or have you got him on ski slopes and not with race cars <laughs> yeah ski slopes so far and uh <laughs> hopefully it's been some, uh, hopefully I want to play some sports as well. I think that'd be pretty cool. But Eli's racing, and Eli loves it. He went to Chili Bowl with, with me, and that was really cool to have him with with us and uh, kind of enjoy his first Chili Bowl together. And he raced the shootout the week, or two weeks prior to that. So that was good. And But, yeah, Tanner's he's not about racing at this point, so I'm fine with that. There you go. Absolutely. Neat stuff. Casey, we appreciate the time. Thanks for helping us kick off this season and uh, wishing you the best behind the wheel and in the owner's role this season with KKR. Right on. Thank you guys a lot. There we go. Casey K joining us here on the program. Stay with us. More in just a moment. Do a little shopping. Well, I heard an apple a day keeps a doctor away and 10 keeps the competition away. I got you a Granny Smith seeing you're a little sour. From sweet to tart and everything in between, Sage supplies every variety of apple that shoppers may be looking for. For over three generations, they've been providing customers with only the best apples, pears, and cherries that Washington has to offer. You're finally taking my advice. Well, something like that. I figured out how to get my 10 apples in a day. Sage Fruit, it's the choice of champions. We're back, you're watching Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit, and it is time for the Tweet Your Seat Tweet of the Week, and it comes from <laughs> Brian <laughs> Brown this week. It is the knock, he's the Knoxville champion, and a huge Chiefs super fan. Kansas City Chiefs, obviously, they are headed to the Super Bowl yep. now, and Brian is excited, but he was there at the playoff AFC Championship playoff game at Arrowhead Stadium, incredible stadium, it's one I want to get to. Yeah. But the Chiefs will play the Tampa Bay Bucks. Yes. Coming Fascinating up. stuff. Would have been interesting pre-COVID what this was going to do because Tampa Bay is where the Super Bowl is. That's where East Bay is, not mm -hmm. far from Volusia. Mm -hmm. Everybody was worried about hotel rooms for a while. <laughs> right. Uh, COVID kind of made the Super Bowl yes. less of an event. Um, but fascinating stuff. And all of our Kansas City Chiefs fans are all fired up about the big game <laughs> coming up this weekend. So no doubt about it. Yeah, Chuck, Chuck, yes, Sage, our guy Sage, Chuck. Our guy Chuck, he's Kansas City boy. He no is. doubt about it. Hey, let's take a lap around the sprint car world. Lap number one or turn number one. This is like an Abbott and Costello skit. Okay. Rico no longer drives for Rico. Jack <laughs> drives for Rico. Rico drives for Paul. Jason is partners with Rico. Okay, uh, let's unfurl this because over the, about the week's period of time, it was like silly huh? season hit late this year. Yes, and it my did. gosh, is it yes, extra and silly? And it's silly. <laughs> okay, Jack Rico is not driving for himself because Jack is going to Jack Hoddenshield in his 48th and final season is going love to it. drive 25 races, West Coast and marquee events. I love this for Jack Hoddenshield because it is going to be top shelf equipment for him to wheel. Ag agreed. And it's just going to be so fun to watch because I think everybody's going to be on that fun level. The seriousness yeah. is kind of 
Well, not that it's going to be thrown out the window, but yeah. it's going to be different. Jack, Rico, Jason, exactly. size. Yeah, there's, yes. a, there's a yes. theme here for sure. <laughs> Rico's going to drive some for Paul Silva. And then Rico is partners with Jason Sides. Jason's going to run the full Outlaw Tour. What I really like about this, Jason's had a challenge just with, with funding and managing it. And I think Rico and his group is going to be really helpful for Jason. I think this is like a win for everybody. And it's going to be fun. Yeah. And it's going to be fun to watch. Who's on first? <laughs> Who's on second? Turn number two. How about this? Jim and Sandy Klein. Now, you know the Kleins from Pennsylvania. Longtime owners. Man, Solid people in this sport in central Pennsylvania. Um, the sport in Pennsylvania wouldn't be what it is without them, and even so more now. JNS Fabricating, the, uh, what is it called? JNS Fabricating Weekly Warrior Award. Each week, listen to this at Port Royal. Going to Victory Lane, they're going to draw a number between 7th and 24th finishing position. All-star races 11th and 24th. The driver that finished in that corresponding position is getting $1,000. And that helped. I mean, it goes so far. You know, if they're having a bad night and then they end up finishing and then you get told you get a thousand extra dollars. I mean, it just, it elevates everything. You know, at least your fuel's paid for to haul back exactly. and forth to the track or your pit You've passes taken or whatever a beaten, it may be. Likely. Exactly. You know, and maybe this one, now, even if you had a ninth place run and it wasn't a money making night, it was a break even night or yes. you lost a little bit, that thousand dollars makes it so it it's a, a profitable night. That's right. Or if you wadded one up, aye, aye, aye. Uh, turn number three, partners partnering with partners. We talked about Sage Fruit just a little bit. Sage Fruit and Hefner Racing Products have teamed up for the IRA Bumper to Bumper Sprint Rookie of the Year, the Sage Fruit HRP Apple Cup Rookie of the Year Award, $2,500, a top and nose wing and a fire suit from HRX. I love Sage. I love Hefner. All of our partners are such good racing people. And giving back to the sport we love, right? I mean, that's what it's all yes. about. And seeing that these drivers can flourish because of we have incredible partners. Finally, making our way to turn number four on our lap around the sprint car world. Have you ever driven up I-77 you know and it. looked over and saw that vacant racetrack? You betcha, but it isn't vacant no more. The motorsports <laughs> capital of cool, West Virginia Motor Speedway is back and they're going to its original size, which I'm not sure about that. Five-eighths of a mile is a big, big racetrack. It is. Uh, they've got four dates of sprint cars, uh, late models modified monster trucks, mud bogs, music festivals. But that is a place I've driven by there 10 times. And every time I'm L, I'm looking out the window and uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be fun to see what Cody Watson and the Conleys do. Yeah. They're all deep into the, into the racing. So I think it's going to be pretty good there. Great stuff. That is your lap around the sprint car world. Stay with us. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to check out. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Again, we are in the Hercules Tires studio, and this is kicking off our 10th season. Now, this thing started, Kendra and I, in, in 2011, we started it, and then Kendra graduated to Knoxville, mm -hmm. and you came in on the TV side, Aaron on the uh, Aaron on the um, video side of it, yeah. and uh, good stuff. Craig has been there the whole time. Digging. Craig, our producer, has been there the whole time, putting still up with my nonsense. Buttons. putting Yeah, mashing the buttons and twisting <laughs> the knobs, putting up with my nonsense, so we're excited about it. Our 10th season, and we're very, very excited about it. Very excited about things getting up and running. This week, the whole world is focused on Volusia, and then they have the Dirty South Swing for the Sprint Cars. How about that? I'm excited. It's going to be different. And it's going to, I think it's just going to make things flow better. You know, that break yeah. always just put a lull in everybody's season. Yeah, it you was had the, weird. You had the king of the 360s at East Bay that one or two of the guys would go over to. You'd have a little bit here and a little bit there. We've got World of Outlaw Racing right now, right straight through. Let's go. I mean, it's just let's let's go. giddy up. We're going to be <laughs> dirt visioning it every <laughs> night of our lives until we get there real time. Right. Now, you, you've That's been right. out there. I right actually there. hit Scraven a week or so back. So, I mean, Got a little bit of it and a little bit of dirt in my beer. I'm ready right. to go. So fun <laughs> stuff, that's for sure. It is going to be a fun season, World of Outlaws. It's going to be fun with other tours as well. Hey, we love that you have joined us here. Thanks again to Casey Kane for joining us here on our program. And thank you again for joining us here on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit.